So we now look at the, uh, the idea of the cross product. So the cross product, uh, uh, this idea is for vectors in R3 or 3 space. So this is a concept that is in fact limited to R3. So if we have two vectors u, u1, u2, u3, and v equals v1, v2, v3, then the cross product of u with v is calculated using this determinant formula. Yeah, so it can be thought of as this determinant where this is the vector i, which is the um, horizontal component, the vector j, which is the vertical component, well, sorry, the x component, y component, and the z component, okay? So you, and you put the first vector as the second row, and the second vector, so that's the first vector, u goes here, okay, and v goes here. So you go v1, v2, v3. So let me just change that color. Let's just stay consistent. So if we were to do that, that would be the cross product. So that's how you would easily work. Um, now, this is how you'd work it out. You could memorize the formula if you like, but I'm personally not a big fan of memorization. So if we calculate this, it becomes basically U2, U2V3 okay plus uh, v2 u3 i plus or sorry i minus let's see we have u1 v3 u1 v3 minus v1 u3 into j Okay, plus u1 v2, u1 v2 plus v1 u2 minus into k. Okay, so which means that basically what you're saying is that you end up with u2 v3, um, u2 v3. Minus v two u three into i minus u one v three minus v one u three into j plus u one v two minus v one u two into k. So now um, this can be of course written as follows. Okay, and then here take the minus inside. And this becomes v1 u3 minus u1 v3. And the last piece, okay? So that's, we end up with that. Now you can, you will find this in the tech, in any book on the cross product. But this is, a, this determinant is just an easy way to remember it. Okay, so that's the definition of the cross product. Now, physically, the cross product uh, works like this. So you have a vector, uh, for instance, um, what it's what it actually how you actually interpret it physically is that you have a vector u for instance here and there's the vector v okay so let's have a look at this situation uh, so you have u and v as two vectors what's going on is that if you if suppose theta is the angle that you would go through uh, to um, uh, to go towards v. So, in other words, if you think about it, if you were to curl this, we can use a right-hand rule to figure out what's going on here. Uh, in the sense that, um, if you were to uh, curl your fingers to, from in the direction of rotation, so your uh, your fingers curl from u towards v, okay, and then your thumb points upwards. So this is known as a right-hand rule. So. Um, Case, I would just say that if you did that, u cross v, u cross v would be the vector that is orthogonal to both u and v. And of course, it is the vector that is coming out of the screen, uh, pointing upwards, pointing away from the screen. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, and of course, if we go V cross U, that would be going inside the screen to, uh, and pointing downwards. Um, uh, but in, uh, you can imagine a vector going inside the screen and pointing in the opposite direction, as opposed to this. So that would give you your um, um, the interpretation of what U cross V physically is. Okay. So now we're going to look at some properties, uh, uh, some relationships between the cross product, okay, and the dot product. So we assume that uh, we're going to um, we're going to assume that uh, the vectors u, v, and w all belong to R three, and um, we're going to start with the first uh, and obvious property is that as we discussed earlier that u cross v is in fact the vector that is perpendicular uh, to both u and v um, from the tail or the point that joins u and v. So obviously then if we take the dot product of u with u cross v uh, or we take the dot product of v with u cross v okay both of these are going to be obviously zero uh, similarly slightly more not so obvious property is this one which is that the the norm of u cross v and keeping in mind that um, we're talking about a vector here squared is in fact equal to the norm of u squared uh, the norm of v squared minus um, u dot v squared so obviously, um, you know that is a. It can easily be proven um, without much difficulty. You can actually prove this um, uh, identity, uh, but of course it's a bit algebraically complicated because you would have to use the definition of u cross v and then take the norm of that, which is a rather complicated um, uh, expression. So let's uh, let's just keep moving. So here, this is one property. This is another one. Here's another one. Let's look at another one. This is um, in case of uh, in, case, in case of three vectors, when we take the cross product of u with v cross uh, w, it is uh, the same as um, u dot w, in fact, uh, multiplied by v the vector, okay? Because remember, u dot w would give you a scalar quantity, minus u dot v, okay, which is another scalar quantity multiplied by the vector w. So again I'm giving these to you without any proofs um, uh, just for the sake of knowing these properties um, that there are these relationships that uh, you can easily quite easily prove these in fact. Uh, they're, they're quite simple mostly a, a little bit of algebra and you should be able to prove these quite easily. Um, so here's another one, okay? Um, right. Uh, now, if I specifically go to the um, the cross product itself alone, uh, let's do some of that. So properties of the cross product, um, where of course uh, u, v, and w as earlier belong to R three. Uh, three space and k is a scalar. Then we have the following properties. The first one is that the order of taking the cross product, okay, is if we reverse, then it is as simple as the negative of v cross u. So u cross v is the same as negative of v cross u. Okay. Um, now another one would be if you were to take like the distributive equivalent would be something like this um, u cross v plus w well that's equal to u cross v I'm sorry one second okay let's do that again so it would be u cross v okay plus v cross w as you would most likely uh, expect okay so simple straightforward follows just like the distributive law. So then if we have on the other hand a scalar multiplying u cross v, remember that is a 
uh, the same as uh, if you had k with u and the cross product with v or it would be u cross kv so um, okay now of course if we were to take the, the cross product of any vector with the zero vector okay that will clearly be just a zero vector okay it's a uh, very straightforward another very interesting one um, perhaps not very obvious is that the is the cross product of u with itself is in fact a zero vector okay. so those are some properties uh, of um, uh, the cross product one other interesting um, definition is the scalar triple product the scalar uh, triple product okay and this is a very interesting uh, little formula that results. The scalar triple product is basically u dot product with v cross w. Of course, all three vectors, again, we assume the same, uh, are all in R3. Now, interestingly, what happens is this becomes, in fact, u1 u is, the, is the determinant of this uh, matrix, u1, u2, u3 being its first row. The second row is v1, v2, v3, and the third row is w1, w2, w3. So um, that's what we end up with. So it's a very interesting result. I mean, it can easily be proven, of course, um, by taking the actual dot product of the cross product of v with w. And the end result, of course, we expect this is a scalar uh, quantity. So that's another uh, useful definition. Uh, calculations are quite straightforward, um, not very difficult, in fact, to calculate. All right. One more point I will mention regarding this is that um, this uh, scalar, the, the scalar triple product is, is also, has one special thing associated with it, why it's quite important, is because it, is all, it also gives you the volume. This formula, in fact, gives you the volume of the parallel pipe in three space. So it's the volume Okay, of the parallel, P A R R A L L E L, parallel okay, the parallel pipe in three space. Okay, so volume, and just like a, a two dimension, uh, a two D version of this would be the determinant u one, u two, v one, v two. That will give you the area of the parallelogram. So here I'll show you on the side. So if you were to calculate this determinant, u1, u2, v1, v2, where u and v belong to, say for instance, r2 in this case, okay, okay, then in this case, um, this uh, determinant represents the area of the parallelogram. Okay, and what parallelogram? Basically, um, it would mean that, um, for instance, if this is u and this is v, then this parallelogram is what we're talking about here. Okay, so the area of that parallelogram is this determinant, the absolute value, of course, of the determinant because the a determinant cannot be um, zero. So I'll just mention that uh, absolute value. of this determinant. And here also we have the same thing, volumes cannot be negative, so the absolute value of this determinant is the volume of the parallel pipe. So there you can see a dimensional change. That's in R2, here's we're in R3, so we get a parallel pipe. So um, you know what a parallelogram looks like? A parallel pipe is in fact a three-dimensional parallelogram. So um, here's a quick uh, diagram just to show you what it looks like okay okay so that's what it looks like that's a parallel pipe which looks like a cuboid in fact but it's a parallel pipe okay um, a cuboid doesn't have to be, I mean, a cuboid is mostly for a three-dimensional rectangle. This is not a three-dimensional rectangle. This is a three-dimensional parallelogram, in fact. So, so it could be, its sides could be diamond-shaped. Um, 
but I mean they don't have to be squares for instance and so on okay so that that is all we're gonna do on the cross product so we'll stop